Hi, thanks for turning up. <laughs> um, I'm Bernie Rayside and I run a PR and marketing company in the wide format print industry called BRPR. And I'm just going to share my story with you um, on uh, how I set up my textiles business using my knowledge that I've learned over the years in um, wide format print. Okay. So if you're running a sign business or a display graphics business, you have a lot of skills um, and knowledge already um, that you can transfer to textiles very, very easily. Um, I say here you can't put an old head on young shoulders, but you can, can, can combine them to create new ideas. So with your own existing products and looking at some new products, um, new printers, etc., new technologies, you can combine these to um, create new ideas. So I'll give you a bit of background of how I um, started this. So I, I've worked for many years with uh, manufacturers, resellers, of print equipment like Muto, HP, Suma, people like that, helping them market their products. So I understand a lot about what your printers and cutters already do, um, and I have a lot of background doing that. Um, I now, as I say, run BRPR, which is an agency specializing in... Um, at Sign and Digital UK, UK Sign... Uh, show similar to this back in 2011 I identified that textiles digital textiles was a growth market suddenly companies like Mamaki and HP were bringing out printers that could print directly onto textiles that was really interesting um, nothing like that had really happened since the late 90s when HP decided to put some inkjet cartridges into a cutting plotter and the design jet was born so I thought this is a very interesting time uh, for us in our industry. Um, so I decided I'd learn about textiles. <laughs> and I went back to university <laughs> to learn about textiles from scratch. Um, so, and I got one of these, which is a student card, if you remember all back away. It was just great, yeah, free travel and everything. So anyway, so as a mature student, I went to learn about textiles um, for two reasons. One. I always wanted to do it and learn about textiles properly. But two, I thought, if I'm rubbish at design, at least I can talk to people about textiles in the capacity that I understand from wide format print. Um, because there isn't a huge amount of knowledge out there about it. So, so that's what I did. I then went to um, FESPA Barcelona in 2012 and um, met some very interesting people. A company called Pod Iberia had just launched their direct to textile printer with inbuilt fixation. Um, and I found that extremely interesting that I wasn't on my own in terms of understanding that there was going to be a lot happening in digital textiles. The following year at FESPA London, Pod or MTEX as you probably know them now, had launched quite a few products, including um, printers using uh, reactive dyes, acid dyes, um, which makes it extremely interesting for the textile industry, not just for uh, signage and display graphics. At the same show, HP launched their latex HP 3000 for the interiors and wallpaper market. Um, later that year, I was asked to organize in my PR capacity a conference on interiors, uh, wall coverings for a company in London. Um, and so I decided to bring my designs with me and got the guy to print them out while I was in the back of the conference. Saw the stuff being printed out and I thought, oh, okay, maybe I'm not too bad at this design lark. I can probably give this a go. So, so that's what I did. So what was the outcome of, of that three years of knowledge and experience is that I came up with something totally new. I actually learned to knit again at, at university, which is really weird for an Irish person to have forgotten how to do that. But anyway, I learned how to knit and I wanted to incorporate knit into my digital print. Um, so that's what I did. I created a whole range of wallpaper designs based on my knitwear, um, which I have on authority from 
two of the oldest wallpaper manufacturing companies in the UK, hadn't really been done successfully before. Um, turned them into repeat pattern, and of course, once you have a repeat pattern, you can then print onto just about anything you could possibly want. The idea behind this was I wanted to create uh, designs and patterns for wallpapers and fabrics that you physically couldn't do any other way but through digital print. And that was really important to me to show the benefits and beauty, really, of digital printing, um, but onto textiles. So the, I'll just go back. These are printed on the HP Latex, and these are printed on the MTex. They're color matched, and they match the wallpapers. So for me, that was, it was, it was, uh, it's, it's, this is the way the industry is going where certainly for interiors and interior decorators and designers, they want something special, they want something new. It's now possible, you can do it. You can have one off cushions and wallpapers, etc., through digital technology. Um, and this is where I see you guys working with creative minds, using your existing technology and some new technologies to be able to create real business ideas so you can see, I'm kind of, it's terrible, but I'm, I'm lumping us students, ex-students, into the insanity section here, which is dreams and ideas. Um, but working with existing businesses with innovation to create new products and ideas, you can then scale up to make profit. Oh, I'll go back if you want to take that picture. You go back to, it's not my diagram. The guy is up there, he's clever. Um, okay. That equals profit. So the result for me was I launched my collection in January um, at Showcase Ireland, um, and I've just come back from exhibiting at Pulse in London, um, where certainly the wallpapers and the printed um, textiles have had a huge impact on um, buyers uh, because now they're they're opening their eyes to they can have anything they want. Um, but of course, I'm working with sign makers like yourselves to produce my stuff. I'm not working with traditional textile companies um, because you guys understand your materials, etc. I can do, I can sew, I can make these things up myself. That's no problem. But I'm not going to traditional textile companies for stuff like this because <coughs> they probably wouldn't do it. They're looking for the bigger business, whereas you're looking for unique businesses, and that's this is where creative minds come into it. Um, and it's very quick and easy to be able to come up with new products uh, when you've got digital um, machines. So here we go, you've got the technical knowledge, you've got access to machinery and materials with an understanding of what they can do and you've got the staff and facilities already. Um, I went to an exhibition in Portugal last year where a group of students had created raincoats using banner material, printed banner material. Now, they weren't breathable, but they didn't care. It was, for, um, it was cheap to produce. There was no, sew there was no uh, finishing. There was no hemming. They just, they just sewed one, one simple hood onto the edge of a um, printed uh, circular piece. Um, and they were for festivals. Very cheap, easy to use, throwaway products from banner material. Flag material is the same. Um, so these, guys, these students basically had brainstorms, they decided, right, these are the fabrics we're going to use, this is how we're going to do it, and this is what we're going to produce. I know people don't particularly like working with students because, you know, they don't think they have any money, but believe me, when it comes to final degree shows, students have money or the parents have the money to give it to them. Um, and you can really help them create some really amazing stuff um, because they really don't know what's available and what they can produce. Um, they've got loads of enthusiasm and determination to make things work. Whereas we, we just say it's another printer, it's another banner material, it's another bit of flag. They're like, oh wow, I can do this with this, I can do this with this. And they don't learn that at universities. So it's, I think it's really important to engage with creative people to be able to do that. So you can generate new revenue streams with these new ideas. Um, increased revenue obviously can lead to reinvestment, so you can upgrade your equipment. You're future-proof in your business if you're working with young people. If you strike up a connection with your local university or your um, technical college and decide, right, okay, we're going to run a competition with you guys to create the most innovative product three meters wide, 
um, then you're engaging with these people, they'll start to use you more, etc. You can innovate and start to lead the market. I mean, who knows what ideas these guys come up with, you know? But if they come up with an idea and you've helped them do it, they will stick with you, they will be loyal. Um, and of course, your staff are going to find it really interesting because they're working on stuff that's not bog standard. It's a bit weird. They're going to have to think outside the box. Um, and that, that obviously makes their job satisfaction a lot better as well. So uh, that's kind of my talk. I've got a short video that shows you the collection from the inspiration right the way through to the finished product. It's only about three or four minutes. Um, so I'm going to play that for you and I can take any questions at the end. Been a stranger here to the hills above Glenshane and your rocks and your rain, where the silent souls on the prairie walls in the wind they sing, come away, come away to the murmur and stream with the time be. Little Cahan Clark, come away, they say, to the band of the land. Yeah. 